Hi guys, it's me, and today is my day for the surgery. I'm a bit anxious, but I pray all is going to go well. Pray for me, stay with me, pray, 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 pray for me. Yeah. Bye. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well, it's your girl Jennifer and this is Against All Odds. Today I'm here with an interesting, exciting is not the word, maybe interesting conversation. So yeah, sit down and let's interact uh, with this conversation. I'd wish you leave me comments in the comment section let me know if you've experienced what i'll be talking about and yeah let's just get to interact so i want to give my experience of will i call it a nurse from hell health professionals from hell i just I have so many friends who are in the medical field, they are nurses and doctors, and when, when I call it nurses from hell, I feel like I'm, I'm doing them a disservice because they're very, very good people and they do the best, to the best of their ability. So on this conversation, I'm not generalizing people in the medical profession. I just, I'm just addressing it to this particular experience. So please forgive me and bear with me. And as I say always, I'm about mental health. And I cannot be helping people with their mental health when I'm not talking about real issues. This platform and this channel against all odds, I started it to talk about real issues and be very practical and open because most of the time people want to sugarcoat things for us. And that's one of the things I want to avoid. I want to be real, so call things as they are. Definitely, as you can tell, I'm not the very energetic self. And it's because uh, if you've watched my videos in the past, I mentioned at some point how I was struggling with chest pains and chest issues and was going through a series of tests to be able to determine what the issue was and uh, out of so many tests and so many things it was concluded that it was my gallbladder that was the issue and then needed to be taken out again <laughs> I will do I will do a video of why I say taken out again so watch out for that one it's coming soon <laughs> yeah i say taken out again so yeah so i don't have so much energy and power because uh i just had surgery and yes i'm in the recovery journey maybe you're asking then if you had surgery why are you not resting and uh do you have to do this and i am yeah. Yes, I have to. I have to. Because this is how real life is. And I'm also spending this time instead of just being in the house, sleeping. Yeah, I just try to make something, some, some use of my time. And if I don't even air it now, probably there are things I may never even get to talk about. Because it's really, it's fresh in my mind and it's actually the right time to talk about it, you know. Yeah, so 
so I want to talk about my experience. I will put a video here and forgive me if you'll find it a bit disturbing but I'll have to put it just a part of it for you to just see what I went through because I, I took that video on purpose because I've been I've been in that place one many two times one too many times <laughs> and yeah sometimes let me tell you I didn't take it because I wanted to put it out here sometimes pain makes you do things so for me I think it was a way of me doing dealing with my pain at that time so I took that video so yeah <sighs> so I went for surgery on a Tuesday yeah, on a Tuesday. I was the first person to go in for surgery. I'm going to spare you all the other details so that I get to the real issue. So I went in for surgery. Um, some small history about me that I have discovered now because of several surgeries I've had and uh, several episodes of being under the anesthetics I realize I don't recover quickly I don't turn around quickly from the anesthetic so medication so I don't think it was supposed to be a long surgery because it was a laparoscopic surgery yeah and that is also the reason why I am able to just be talking because it was laparoscopic it was not entirely very invasive uh, so yeah, so so I don't know how long I was in surgery for, but I know the recovery was the one that I believe took such a long time. So I recover, I come back. So I'm starting this story from. I will put a full. I'll put photos because I took photos of myself and I asked a nurse to take photos of myself when before I went in for surgery, so you could see me how I was then and then also after surgery I didn't take photos after surgery I wasn't in, in the place to but I took that video that I will you will get to see so this time of my recovery when 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 I came to myself all I could remember having is so much pain so much pain this the way when I talk about this pain and pains that I've had that have been so extreme that, they trigger me. If I get emotional, please forgive me, but yeah. So yeah, I just found myself too much pain. And somehow it is expected because the anesthetics are just wearing off, isn't it? So somehow you'll be in some level of pain. But remember when you're coming to recover sometimes in that recovery period, sometimes you're able to hear things happening around you. You may not speak but some, you can tell this activity so one what was happening in the background i could tell there are people who are recovering from the anesthetics so quickly and getting to be discharged because uh uh theoretically i was supposed to go in and go out the same day it was supposed to be stay in the hospital for a few hours then uh, be discharged for home the same day so and a lot of people who were who came I think for similar surgeries or surgeries of that nature were going home the same day and many of them had gone so uh, I'm coming around and there's a lot of pain a lot of pain so most other people could be in pain and would have been in pain but when the pain is managed and they're able to go home they go home you only needed to stay in hospital if the pain doesn't get managed and mine was not getting under control because it was like I was getting uh, medication by the time it's wearing off the pain comes back again and it is too much and everything so so that was the situation so I get moved from one recovery room went to a different ward or place because I don't even, I didn't know where I was. I just, you know, I was in the hospital, see myself being moved from one point A to point B. Nobody told me this is this place and this is this place. So I was just in the hospital. I can't remember where. So I get to this place and 
I'm in pain. Pain, 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 pain. And in this pain, one of the nurses tells me that, uh, because I think I've moved from now the first recovery area where you 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 are in after after the immediately after the surgery. So this is a another step, like a second recovery area, not the first one. The first one I remember when they needed to, when I was in so much pain, all the medication was IV through the vein. But in this other place, the medication now was not IV, it was oral. <sighs> so, and I'm in that place, and so the one of the nurses, when I'm in one of the pain, in pain, comes and tells me, Jennifer, you will now need to start uh, trying to walk, because that is wind pain, and wind pain, the only way to start dealing with it is to walk. Have you thought in your head for a minute, this is where you think in a minute, like, the person talking to me, are they crazy or what? You know, so that is what I'm thinking in my head. I'm thinking like, are you even, what, are you even sin? Because immediately they tell you that, the, the one thing that I, I, I remember trying is to feel my legs. And I couldn't properly even feel my legs because I'm still, you know, under the, the anesthetics don't wear off so fast you see so you you you, you can feel the leg, but even to lift them to be able even to walk then even the pain you're in even to to turn so i'm just imagining you you're telling me that even turning is the issue now you're telling me even taking it a step further walk i just told her you know what i'm in pain i can't do it so goals after sometimes brings me the pain relief I'm looking for, but most of the pain relief they're bringing you at this time is is very basic pain relief like paracetamol. Uh, then sometimes I'll alternate it with uh, some codeine. Those people who understand uh, how this pain relief works, you start with a little the one that is not very strong. If the pain is not is not being managed, go to a little bit higher like that. You keep increasing. Uh, depending on the pain so so I'm in so much pain I can't even move I can't do anything now somebody is telling you you need to walk to get rid of the wind pain even wind pain when somebody is telling you wind pain do you even know wind pain you just know you're in pain and that's you know medical people sometimes try to come down to even even if somebody is well educated and everything Try to demystify some of these uh, things. When you tell me it's wind pain, what does what is wind pain? I just tell me, you people who who are listening to me right now, have you ever categorized pain to or classified pain? This is uh, other than knowing the general things. It's uh, leg pain, tummy pain, headache, uh, my uh, hand is hurting, something like that. Have you been uh, wind pain? gas pain, air pain, I don't know if there are such pains. This wind pain was a new word to me. So I'm wondering, you're telling me it's wind, uh, it's wind pain. So what, what is wind pain? I don't care about wind pain. All I am, I'm in pain, you know. Yeah, so, so that was the one of the things that I found and I found it very weird. Anyway, she gave me pain relief. Anytime I'd, I'd buzz, uh, then they would uh, top it up. So there was this nurse who came and she came later with one of these uh, carers uh, or care assistants, I don't know, uh, uh, health care, I don't know what they call them in the hospital. But she was not, the other one was not a nurse, it was these people who assist the nurses in a ward. So they came together and because at this time they needed to check how how my wounds are, uh, if they they are okay, and then support me to stand up if I, I was able to stand up and walk. But this time I needed to use a toilet, so the one easy way of me using the toilet is them supporting me to go to the toilet. You see, so when they came, 
this was this nurse was very friendly at this time uh, uh, this nurse particular nurse was friendly but her assistant here wasn't very friendly and you will see how so they try and support me to go to the toilet now so one is helping me on one side the other one is on the other side i could hardly move because my legs were still so heavy at least now i'm able to feel them because sometimes it has gone at least i can move them very slowly but you still feel this and not your legs you feel like they can give way but other than that the pain was too much so not like every step you're making it's like you're feeling the pain like that so i was walking so slowly the nurse on this side and i remember while she was on my left so the nurse on my left is kind of understanding because she was a mature nurse and i felt like she understood where i'm coming from hmm. this assistant care or whoever this is on this side is a young girl not understanding no clue whatsoever so for how and this one is helping me to walk slowly this one is trying to pull me to walk faster it's like let's get this job out of the way you know have you been in pain here somebody is understanding and here you need to use the same body that is in pain to pull back you know like when somebody is trying to pull you and I, i'm not telling you don't pull me i'm just holding back my hand and my body to just show you like no don't pull like that and when i felt you know it's a body language she's not speaking it's how her body language is communicating like can you move and for me i'm also using my body language to communicate but at some point i had to tell her hey slowly i still can't even feel myself you know then she says yeah that's why you need to walk and i'm like i'm walking you know so the toilet wasn't very close so they they took me helped me i was in bad and forgive if it sounds gross to you but they had even to go and help me sit on the toilet because i couldn't do it by myself help me there walk out so that i can relieve myself then the uh, the nurse told me once you're finished please buzz so when i buzzed after i'm done when this lady comes so what i didn't know is that once they 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 left me in the toilet uh the nurse i think i used the key to lock me in just so that somebody doesn't come and open i mean uh, like find me in the toilet you know for privacy you see and after i finished that's why she told me to buzz so after i finished i buzz so this assistant i think is not who comes because when she comes and and she knocks and i say come in then she tells me but you've locked and for me i'm thinking but you've locked why use that statement you're the same person who was here with the nurse and it is you guys who have left me sat on the toilet why are you saying you know i just so and then uh, so so it's like she was trying to tell me you have locked yourself you came to the door and locked the door you can still come to the door and open the door you get but i couldn't because even i can't even help myself to stand you see so and i know she knew what she's doing because immediately i said i i, I said i told her i didn't lock the door immediately she unlocked it so clearly she knew what she was doing and she wanted to, because if she she didn't know then how come she has the key to unlock it then and then you get <sighs> people thanks people we go through when we are sick oh god i don't wish sickness on anybody <sighs> god have mercy on people so she comes and this time she didn't come with a nurse so she's come alone so definitely if they helped me two of them how is it going walking back uh with one person and remember the one person that has come back is a person who is trying to just pull me around you know so when she came first she stood it's like she doesn't want to help me so she then then i told her but i can't stand that's when now she she comes and helps me up after she helps me up and now we the way she's behaving it feels like i feel so uncomfortable you know when somebody is trying to to make your body do something it can't do and it's not because you don't want you're so much in pain and so for me i felt like it's going to be easier me holding on to walls 
and walking. So I started doing that because I didn't want her to pull me and I can already see she has the attitude is not right. Then she asked me, do you need my help? Then I told her, yes, but you need to walk slowly. So she gives me her arm and so one side I'm holding onto the wall, on one side it's her. Then I still feel her trying to pull me and I told her, excuse me, you need to walk slowly. And it's at that point, she starts walking so slowly. But you know how somebody is walking slowly with an attitude? But for me, I told myself, I don't care where, what attitude you have. As long as you're not pulling me and you're walking slowly, it serves me. I'm not here to pick fights with people. It's me who is uh, struggling and yeah, I, I, I don't want to be mistreated. Neither do I want to, be, to, to mistreat anyone, you know. So anyway, she helps me. Because this time she doesn't have to do anything, she has to comply, then we go, get back. So, so that experience for me wasn't very nice, but I was like, okay, it's life, you find such kinds of people. And she was so adamant, every time she would come, she kept on wanting me to walk, Jennifer walk, Jennifer walk. But I didn't walk again since that time, because I couldn't, because the pain kept on being so much and so much so many hours later I go and then they realize oh she can't be discharged to go home so now i have to be moved to a different ward so definitely uh my whole time of being there anytime uh i would ask for medication most of the time it would be her coming definitely with some little bit of attitude but definitely what can you do you may have attitude but if the person is not well it's not well you give me medication and I, I wasn't asking for any special treatment i was just asking for medication so yeah so that was one of the experiences which i didn't like but anyway it was okay i i, I survived it so now went to this other world hmm. Now this is where my story starts. Went to this ward. When I go, when by the time I'm getting, remember I, I would get pain, like I would get pain relief. When I get the strong pain relief, the pain comes down a little bit. Then when that pain relief is wearing off, it comes back full blast in such a bad way. So when I went, but also remember because the anesthetics are in your body, you're a bit sleepy, you're uncoordinated, there's all this going on, you know, and then there's pain from the surgery as well, you know, the wound pain, the wound itself, other than now the pain of the, of the results of the surgery. Oh. So, I'm, I'm, I'm here in the ward, then shifts are changing because by the time I'm going, still the day shift, then the night shift comes up, I, I, I don't even get to know when they come in. All, uh, but when I would ask for pain relief, this person would just come. So it got to this time. Remember very well, it was midnight. Oh, the pain was bad, bad, so so bad. And because this time I'm able to to stand and try to walk a little bit, so I get myself out of the bed. And I tell myself, because I've had surgeries before, and truly, walking, if you can, uh, a bit helps, you see. So, so I start, uh, the, the place I was in was a bit big, so I could walk, so I just held the bed, and I would try and just use the bed to walk very slowly, at least uh, jumpstart my process. So, and you know when I'm doing, I'm walking, is because I'm trying... Because they kept on saying the, 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 the walking would help. So I'm trying for this walking to help. Plus the medication I've had, the pain relief. But it's not helping. So when I buzz and ask for pain relief, they come and give me the, the most basic pain relief. And now on this ward, they were giving me uh, peppermint tea. Which they say helps with pain. I have never, the, all the times I've been in hospital in pain, I've never been given peppermint tea. This was my first time. For me, I always believe if I am in hospital and I am sick and I am in pain, any help you offer me, if it can help me, I always take it. So this peppermint, even if I've never had it, I told myself I'll drink it. And when I drank it, it's, it's a bland taste of tea, but it was okay for me. 
all all I told I know it it wasn't giving me relief. So when I would ask, they would ask me, "Do you want to make more peppermint?" So I'd say yes, and and I took it. It didn't really relieve me, but I was just hopeful because you also know medically, you don't want to just be given all the uh, strong pain relief. But also, I want to show you the psychology of pain, and after coming from surgery. There's this thing, they also, when you're coming from surgery, when the anesthetics help you not to be in pain. But again, they control it so that even after you leave surgery, you need to be in some pain. Because being in some pain tells them, tells the medical people that your body is now coming back to life and has started functioning. Again, now, if you... You are, you, when you go under the anesthetics, you get to be given oxygen. What, the, what happens now to your lungs, they collapse because they don't need to work. When like now when I'm talking and doing everything, my lungs are active. They are breathing in, expanding, relaxing as I do this. But now when, you, when you're given oxygen, they relax because they don't have to struggle to whatever they are supposed, they, they're expanding, relaxing is being done has been taken over from them it's like you if somebody comes to help you would you continue to work so hard you will relax because somebody is there to help you so now after they take away the anesthetics and take away the oxygen it's telling the lungs wake up there's no more help here you need to be functioning you get so so that pain is good because it is telling it is telling you now the body has started working for itself the brain itself is also working and now can tell you what is not working right you see so the as level and a degree of pain after surgery is is good for that specific reason but when the pain is getting to be intolerable and bearable that degree is not right something is wrong it needs to be managed so my pain was becoming so so much so this time, when I'm asking for this pain relief, it is an assistant that is coming. So when it gets to some point, this assistant comes and tells me, Jennifer, you can't have any more uh, pain relief. And I'm thinking, why? Why? Why on earth will I not have pain relief? And then she says, uh, you, you need uh, to wait for 20 minutes. The system will not give us, uh, will not allow us to, to give if you're in the West like me, there's that thing where everything has to go through a system. So the system, uh, when they're trying, because they won't, by the time they issue you, give you physically the medication, they have run it through the system. So the system will give them an okay to give it, and then they come and give it. But now if the system does not allow them, they will not come and give you, and then go back to the system and do it. You get could be confusing for people who don't understand how this works, but that is how it works. Because medication here is timed. So if you give at four hours, for four hours and you're supposed to give after four hours, it will only allow you to give after four hours up to a certain degree you get of time. So now, because I'm asking for pain relief when the, when the next one that I'm due for is 20 minutes to time, then she's telling me I can't have it. But for me, I'm thinking like, why? These are some of the things you go uh, and talk to the doctor to, 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 and tell him this, this and this. So she comes and, and starts insisting, and that time I'm in pain. This time now is that pain where I don't want basic pain relief. I don't want the next top. I want the top one, that one that will manage this pain because I've been persevering. And also, if you know me naturally, I, am, I have very high tolerance to pain. I can hold my pain. If you find me not holding, then it's too bad. So this time I'm getting to that. It's so bad. You know, like that pain now, you started like, mm, now you've started like, mm, you're making even sounds. Now you're even about to start screaming, you know. So I, now, and you can imagine you in that pain. Now somebody is trying to make you talk. And I felt like I, 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 they want to make me start pleading for this medication. Oh, it was... So I tell her, I, for me now, I start insisting I need this pain relief. And for her, she tells me, you can't have it. And I'm thinking like, 
as who? Why can't I have it? And at this point, I now she she she. I'm thinking like you're just an assistant. You need to first go even tell the nurse because you're taking decisions in your hands. And let me tell you something. When I just imagine, when I think about that, it's just taking me back to that pain. Or in that pain, I tell myself, you know what? I'm a spiritual person. I may not manage the pain medically with tablets and medicine. But I know one way that I've always managed pain and it works and that is through prayer. And because at this point in time I cannot pray, I just tell myself, God has blessed me with parents who are so good and kind. I can wake them any time of the night. So me, the next thing I do is call my parents. I call my parents and I tell them, oh, please pray for me. I am in so much pain. And the first thing they ask me, can't you get help? Can't you get medication for it? And I'm like, I've been pleading for this medication. They are refusing to give it to me. When you're here and your parents are in Africa and you're telling them that that breaks their heart. And I knew that it broke their heart. But you know what? At this time, I wasn't calling them to break their heart. I just wanted that prayer. They've been there for me in worst situations. So I knew this is... It's not anything new to them, so they will be there for me. And yes, they start praying for me. And as they are praying, this now uh, uh, assistant comes back and gives me paracetamol. And I'm thinking, are you joking? And when she gives me paracetamol, I take it, drink it, and I tell her, I still need stronger pain relief. At this time, I was asking for morphine. I was saying, Please go get me muffin. I need muffin right now. And it's at that point when she went, then she, 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 no, before she went, she says, who are you talking to? And I tell her, I'm talking to my parents. And then she, she tells, can I talk to them? Then she starts trying to explain to my parents why she, I can't have the medication. And my parents cannot understand why. You know, because they are questioning, like, why she's in pain? And then she's starting to say, oh, she has wind pain, she needs to walk. And they're like, but I'm walking. Because by the time she's coming, I'm not even in bed, I'm walking around, you know. And I'm like, yeah, we've given her peppermint tea. I've told her, I've taken so much peppermint tea, it's not helping, I'm in pain. Paracetamol won't help me, I need, this time now I'm screaming. Not at her, but because of the pain. You know, ha, huh. and uh, what I've forgotten to tell you is that, you know, this time when she's telling me I can't have the pain and she's going and sometimes coming to check, that is the time I just do that video of me because the pain is too much and I feel like before, because I'm debating, do I call my parents, don't I call them? And then I just tell, let me not disturb them. So I just decide, let me do uh, do just a video and maybe it will help, maybe to distract my head, like me taking a video of myself. Then in the process I realize, no, this is not working. That's now when I decide, no, let me just call and let, let somebody just pray for me, you know? And so now when she comes, now she's telling them, and then they're like, oh, no, 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 so you, you need to do something, you know. And I think maybe f hearing that I'm talking to somebody, then this maybe triggers something. So she goes and calls the nurse, and the nurse now comes. This is why I say nurse from hell. This nurse comes with an attitude, Jennifer, you cannot have pain relief, no. And I'm like, why? Why? You can't have pain relief. This is wind pain. You need to walk around. And I'm like, I'm walking around. And then she tells me, you're not walking. You're just rocking. <laughs> Let me tell you. Thank God they don't give us guns in hospitals. If this would be a moment where somebody just says that and you pull the trigger and you're... <laughs> How does somebody tell you, you're not walking, you're rocking? What? I just told her I need pain relief. My parents are hearing in the background. They are confused. They are here because you know, like you can hear somebody in so much pain, then you can hear somebody's two people are so adamant to get. And I'm like, 
why are you saying you can't give me pain relief? And she tells me, you've not been prescribed. And I'm like, get a doctor to prescribe it. You can't tell me I can't get pain relief. That's why you're here. Call the doctor, let him know, you know. You, you can't just put me to suffer because you're wanting me to walk and telling me it's wind pain and la la la. And at this point, I'm like, you need to give, get the doctor. Oh, then I told her, please go tell, call the doctor. Let me speak to the doctor myself. Let the doctor tell me I can't have pain relief because he will have to explain to me why. Because I don't understand why I can't have this pain relief. And then I asked her, have you ever been in this pain? You're not the one in pain. Have you been in pain before too so that you can tell me I can't have pain relief? And she tells me I've been in this pain before many years ago. I told her then it was many years ago. And and now you're not the one in pain. It is me who is in pain. Mm -hmm. So I really need the doctor to, 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 to talk to me. Let the doctor talk to me. And I think at that point it's when she realizes I know what I'm saying. And I know I'm, because I'm standing my ground. Because at this point now I was telling myself. I think I will need now to need to go and go to their desk. And just find somebody else. And ask to be called for the doctor to be called because at this point I just needed something and it is at that point she goes and after because I could hear her now ring and then she rings the doctor says something about me and the next two minutes the lady comes back and brings me the muffin I was asking for do you know that time we started having this conversation at midnight. By the time I'm given morphine, it is 2 a.m. So you can imagine, when I'm giving you this story, what these people have taken me through for those two hours. And I know it was it was midnight because I before I, I, I walked myself to the washroom, walked back, I was trying to manage the pain, so... Uh, I used, I, I pressed on my phone to see the time. And so, the the time she brings me uh, the muffin, and by the time I'm calling my parents, I know it's around 1 o'clock, 1 something. So, by the time she brings me the muffin, it's 2 a.m. Just imagine what level and manner of wickedness is this. This is truly an ass from hell. Because if you are in the profession... And you don't even need to, to, to struggle if a patient is asking for something that you cannot give. Don't take decisions in your hand. Here we in the West, because for me, I felt she treated me the way any, uh, some wicked health professionals in Africa, in any part of the world, when you're wicked, that's how you treat somebody. Because if you are somebody who understands the code of ethics of your profession, if something is beyond you, you escalate it to the next person and let the next person take the decision. But you just don't come and take a decision against a patient that is detrimental to their health and even to their well-being. Because you see, if she had called the doctor at midnight, I would have gotten that morphine then and it would have sorted me out. Because immediately after some few minutes of taking the morphine, the pain started coming down, coming down and coming down. To the point I was able at least even to go back on the bed and have a little rest. Why did I bring this up? I brought it up because wickedness of people can be in various forms. For me, it was from a health professional. Have you gone to offices and you find people who are wicked? Very wicked. Somebody is serving you. Yes, you are to their mercy, but they behave like the world starts and stops with them. Have you gone to an institution, maybe a school, and there's this teacher who, who treats you or your children like they are, they are God, and them they are, I don't know what, you know. You go and this boss is behaving in some certain kind of way because you are their employee, they feel like they can treat you and behave in any form of way. I'm just here to say, kindness is a virtue. It takes very little energy to be kind, but it takes a lot of energy to be wicked and unkind. You could have found somebody who maltreated you like I was mistreated by this 
nurse and this assistant on this particular night. When when the other one was trying to pull me, it was at least mine, it was bearable. But just imagine now this one. They've gone to another level where they are denying you something that you need and is your right. You know. Why did I bring this up? We get mistreated by people for various reasons, even innocently. But for me, I would never, I do my best never to mistreat people. And I pray that God help me. Nobody will ever call me wicked because I mistreated them or behaved in a certain way towards them. I think it takes me very little energy to be kind. Let it be the same for you. Whatever profession you are, whatever place you are, serving people, serving children, serving adults, serving the elderly, please just be kind. Just be kind. Because unfortunately, they say what goes around comes around. But from the Bible, because I'm spiritual, it says what you sow you will reap. When you sow, you just sow when it's very little. But when you reap, it's enormous. If you sow kindness, you will reap kindness in big numbers. If you sow wickedness, you will sow wickedness multiplied. So please, be kind because you're sowing. And don't be kind to people because you know them. Be kind to everybody. Don't be humble to people that know you. Be humble around everybody. Be polite. Not because people know. Be polite to everybody. You know, just use it as a human basic rule to be kind, to be virtuous, to be yeah, polite, courteous, all these things. Anyway, to change uh, the world, you need to change your mind. Catch you in the next video. Bye.